<clears throat> Sorry about that. I uh, <clears throat> I started coughing here, and uh, <laughs> okay. I hope you got to the end of uh, Bernie Dodge. I coughed and I uh, I got disconnected as I coughed. Sorry about that. If you could uh, share. What information did you get from listening to Bernie Dodge? By the way, Bernie Dodge is the man who started the WebQuest. He started it in 1995, actually. 1995. Now think about it. That's a long time ago. Uh, even in Internet years, when um, people were very skeptical about uh, the Internet, and the fact that we were going to be exposed to information that we didn't really want and our children would be exposed and there was a big scare so Bernie Dodge wanted to teach teachers how to control uh, their students internet use in such a way that they would use it for organized learning and for projects and parents were also worried that their kids were online and they were learning all kinds of horrible things. So Bernie came up with this idea. Teachers would create an introduction, as I said before, an introduction to a quest or a project. They would get the task, each one, on the team would have a role and together as Bernie said the idea was to work together so that everyone's part would become the project itself the teacher would give them instructions they would get the websites that they were allowed to use and they were not allowed to go anywhere else the idea was to use this in a computer lab Okay, most uh, children in those days did not have home computers. It was mainly in school. And then the teacher would evaluate them and they would get the conclusions. Now, I'd like to share with you. Oh, I don't have it anymore because I lost my connection before. I wanted to share with you a wonderful, actually, I think you saw it, a wonderful YouTube video. It's on the landing page for this class where the kids talk about the web quest. How many of you uh, watched the video that was on the uh, landing page for the class? If you could just give me a thumbs up if you watched the video. Oh, you did, Helena. Uh, were you impressed by the kids? I mean, these are little kids. I think they're in grade three, maybe. Oh, you didn't, Teresa? Amazing. So go back into uh, the link that brought you here, and you can watch it later. I was, I was very surprised by the kids' ability. I don't know if they memorized those lines, but they sounded like grown-ups. Um, they seemed to know exactly what a web quest was, and I think you watched it, Susan, too. I was very impressed. In any case, what's behind the web quest because we want our students to be able to not only follow instructions and do what we tell them we want them to be able to go beyond and be creative we want to protect them but we also want them to be creative okay we want to engage them in something that would go beyond themselves and get them excited and that's what web quests can do they can not only get your students to follow but also to go beyond we give them a storyline they play roles real life roles and then they reach a final result when they reach the final result they need to present it just like they would in a business meeting okay you get together you have your task your project and then you have to present your findings. And this is a real life, authentic learning. They'll need to do it at university for their um, projects, their MAs, their doctorates, and in business. Okay, you have to present. And they'll be using creative ways of presenting. 
they can use MoveNote, they can use PowerPoint presentation, they can use Prezi, they can use so many audio, video. Okay, the internet's full of great ideas and you as the teacher provide them with the resources. You share the links with them. And these are called creative artifacts. They demonstrate and they show you the process. And that's really important. You evaluate them not only for reaching the results, but also on the process. How did they start? Did they have any problems? They're supposed to reflect. And by reflecting on the process of getting together, learning together, managing together, coming to decisions, and everything that went wrong. I tell my students, if things, if you have problems, that's great. You'll have something to write about because they have to write about the process. And if things go well, what are you going to write? So, because they kept complaining, I can't get along with this one and this one won't listen to me and this one is bossy and so on. So you explain that this is wonderful. It's wonderful that you're having problems. Then you can share them. And then they come to some conclusion, not only about the problem that they had to resolve, but also about the process of working together. And this is real life. And they learn to express their ideas, of course. And that's where the higher order thinking comes in as well. They're able to reflect. And that's what we want our kids to do. We want them to be able to look and see not blame anybody. Blaming is not going to take you very far, but to see what you did, how you did it, how you can improve, and so on. One way of creating a web quest, and today there's so many different ways of doing it besides a Zunal, is through the blogger, Google Blogger, through a blog. And I started this on the wave. The wave is a story. Are you familiar? Anybody um, familiar with the wave? The wave was an experiment. It's a book based on an experiment done in the 1960s by a teacher called a history teacher called Ron Ross, and uh, he wanted to teach. He wanted to help the students understand what happened in Nazi Germany, and he uh, created the wave. So uh, he uh, modeled what happened and the students became like a movement. Anyways, it's a wonderful story, a great way to demonstrate how uh, creating a movement can be beneficial and it can also be dangerous. So I, I, I want to create a web quest for my students and I started using the blogger. Okay, so you can have pages on a blog. So I created a page for the introduction, the task, the process, resources, evaluation. These are the parts of a web quest. Conclusion, reflection, and the teacher notes. And I wanted to show you that on my website, my old website, I also have topics on web quest that you might be interested in seeing. Okay, so it's not only what you do, it's what others have done before you. And I think this is important. We can learn so much from others who have created web quests. Web quests. And this is the example of the blogger and how I create. Okay, I also have a video. I think it's here somewhere. I think I've added, but I don't want to share it because I'm not sure that um, things are working well today. I think my flash has not been upgraded. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can start a blogger blog. I don't for think free you'll have an echo here. I think there was a problem with the video, and that's really exciting. In my day, when I started uh, working with WebQuest, uh, this was in 2003. We didn't think of creating web quests uh, doing through blogs or uh, through anything but websites. And the problem with websites is that uh, they don't last because you have to pay for a host. Well, with a blogger, 
it can go on forever and ever because you can't lose your account okay so uh, you don't need to pay anything to host it it's hosted by google and google does it completely free so let's um, start off this is my account one of my uh, gmail accounts as you can see i go into blogger okay so take a look at the top here okay i just google blogger if i have an account another way to do it is to go into more Okay, so let's go into more. The minute I uh, click on more, I'll go into Blogger. Okay, so I click on Blogger, and then I get this. Okay, if you don't have anything, I've got a, quite a few blogs. But if you don't, I ignore all this. It'll say New Blog, and I always like to create new blogs. New Beginnings, this is 2014. Why not? So let's start a blog. I'm going to create a web quest, and I'm going to give the blog this name. Don't forget that you can edit everything, change it, delete it, okay? Uh, feel free to change your mind as many times as you want, and that's a privilege. Okay, so a title. I'm going to call this The Wave because I'd like to create a web quest for the story The Wave. So I'm just going to call it The Wave for now, leave out the author and so on. Now, the address, notice it says blog spot. You can also create your customized, but then again, if you do create a customized uh, blog, remember that you're hosting it with a company and you may decide to change your mind. So your web quest will disappear for the world. So if you keep it on the blog spot, it'll stay for as long as Google's around. And we hope that's going to be for a long time. So the address, I'm going to call it the wave. Let's see if that's okay. I'm, I am not go on with this. I just want to show you that you can create a web quest using a blog today. Things have really changed since 2001 and since 1995 when Bernie started the, uh, the web quest idea. I just shared a link. Everything is clickable. So if you click, if you go to um, the PowerPoint presentation, and you get to slide number 11 and click on the YouTube video, you'll get the video. Same with the, um, with the others. Uh, let me just uh, take you here uh, to the other areas. I'm sorry that I lost my connection there. Um, you'll be able to get the links as we go. And I'm getting a warning here that uh, my connection, I just lost my connection. That is not good. Okay, um, yeah, I'm back. All right, so uh, let me continue here. Okay, there's Bernie. So one way of creating, again, if you click on Bernie, you'll get the video that we had watched before, okay, on the PowerPoint presentation. In addition, if you click on this, you'll get the move note. How many of you are familiar with the move note? Move note. I don't know if I like the name. I think it's kind of ridiculous, but okay, great. So I've talked about move note it's just amazing it's very recent it it started out as a google application for educators it's completely free but now it's also independent so if you write down move note okay move note.com i think uh, you'll be able to create an account and you should create an account.com and you'll be able to not only create a web quest, but you'll be able to encourage your students, as I said before, to use MoveNote to present their work. Okay, because they have to present. It's not only about the process and getting to some kind of uh, 
solution or resolution, but it's also presenting your findings and the process. Helena, thank you. Okay, so that's the move note. And I believe you clicked, <laughs> you clicked on the slide, on slide number 13, and that's the link. It looks familiar to something or other to move note. Oh, that's your homework. Excellent. All right. So this, I created this as to demonstrate. Here is the link. You can copy the link to demonstrate actually how uh, this works. And uh, let's go to slide number 13. By the way, when you go to Zoonall, you'll also get the link to Zoonall. Okay, so if you click on the slide itself, it'll take you to the move note. You can also um, use Screencast-O-Matic. I do that often. And then start your move note and then upload it or Screencast-O-Matic does it automatically to YouTube. And then you can have move note on YouTube, which is really great. So here's the link to the move note. Okay, there's the link. Helena added her link. Let me add the link. This is, oh, yeah, this is the link to what you see here. And it's a little bit about the web quest. So what you can do is you can have the instructions added on move note, but you can have the whole uh, web quest as a move note so that students also see you, they hear you and they see the slides as you speak. Okay, so I think that's really a good way to, um, to go about it. Are there any questions so far about web quests? Okay, if you could add in the chat box, what do you teach? Okay, what do you teach? And I'll give you some ideas about the subject and a web quest. So what do you teach? I know what some of you teach. I don't know what Sebastian teaches. I don't know what Paul teaches. I don't know most of you, actually. I guess you're new to uh, Guadalupe. I know what you teach. Susan, I'm not sure I know what you teach. So let's see, Susan, what do you teach? No. You'll be the first one to create one, Susan, uh, or I'll beat you to it. I don't know, because I don't have much time these days, in February anyways. But I will be creating a web quest using MoveNote. So, Susan, if you create one, you'll be the first in the world. Nobody has done it yet. So, think of that. So, we've got uh, Name Moran who is a business, teaches, you teach business, economics, French. And wow, those are really interesting subjects. So you can create a web quest um, based on a lesson that you want to teach. And we've got a wiki facilitator, Sebastian. Oh, Sebastian, I didn't, I didn't know which Sebastian. Hello. <laughs> okay, good to see you. Haven't seen you in a long, long time. So what do you mean by a wiki facilitator? You mean on wiki educator? Do you now facilitate? <laughs> you hid your identity. It's not enough to tell me that you're Sebastian. I needed your last name because I know a lot of Sebastians. So uh, Sebastian, what do you mean by you're a wiki facilitator? I am a technology instructor of teacher can Okay, great. That's wonderful. Lakita, good to see you here. That's great. So you could do so much. So let's see. I helped Paul Paul learn to use wiki. But today you don't need to use wiki skills anymore. I used to teach wiki skills and uh, OERs, Open Education Resources, on Wiki Educator. 
But now that they don't need the wikis anymore because uh, today Wikimedia uh, allows you to use an editor, a tiny NC editor, and you don't need it anymore. Never thought of using Blogger. Isn't that amazing? Today you can use anything, and I'll tell you why it's a good idea to use a Blogger because it'll be there forever. I don't think Google is going to go out of business for a long time. And if you bloggers, you know, you don't have to pay anything. It's completely free. Websites need hosting. And, um, you know, we don't always have the money to upkeep, to pay for the domains and so on. So you can also use WordPress, of course. Um, that's fine, too. You can use any free blog but uh, move note is definitely uh, also a new way of creating a web quest oh so you are on wiki educator <laughs> all right so you oh wonderful so you can f so you know that i've been i used to uh, teach on wiki educator And it is very addictive. Yes, you can use, I think, one of my web quests. I think Wayne McIntosh put one of my web quests on Wiki Educator. I believe it's the last spin. So, uh, Sebastian, look for the last spin and you'll see my, uh, my web quest there. Okay, great. So, we're going to have a whole month. So, what I suggest you do is think think of first of all a task whatever lesson you want to give try to think of the lesson and task what would you like your students to do actually creating a web quest is a great way for us to think out of the box and become creative. So start sharing, think and share, but use something that you need. For example, I'm doing the wave, so I, I need this. And I think that's important. Just to create a web quest for the sake of creating a web quest is not a very good reason to do it. So think of um, what you're doing and then do it through a web quest. Okay, and uh, remember that it uh, takes time. You have to decide how long you want for the project. There are long-term web quests, there are short-term web quests. You want to do this for a month with your students? Do you want to do it uh, in two weeks? Do you want to do it in th for the whole semester? Okay, and don't forget to um, also add all your ideas and thoughts to the course feed okay i think that's really important because you'll have a chance to share with others there are about 500 i think participants right now in the course let me um get the course link for you not everybody comes to live sessions because they can get them the recordings in class but let me just share this the link for those of you that may not have joined okay so here is the link there it is in addition I'd like to invite you okay and this is a treat in February we're going to have two wonderful events one event is Moodle MOOC 3 and these are, of course, completely free. Okay, I'm not talking about anything that uh, costs money. It's completely free. There are amazing presenters, amazing, 
uh, who will be talking about not specifically Moodle. Okay, there are two parts to Moodle MOOC 3. It's not only about Moodle. In fact, I think that Martin Dogiamas uh, would not like it because there's only one part. You will learn to Moodle. There is a free course for Moodlers, people who want to advance Moodle or those who are beginners. There are two courses on how to Moodle, Moodle 2.5. But there are also these presenters and they present on different things. Some of them present on their experiences with teaching online. Uh, for example, Liz Walker from Australia is going to talk about peer pressure teenagers and some of the sex problems that are coming up as a result of the internet, which is a taboo subject for many of us, but she'll be talking about that. In addition, we've got people from South Africa, uh, from Malaysia, from Saudi Arabia, from India, United States, uh, Ghana, from Cyprus, from Portugal, from uh, the Middle East, from Europe, from the UK, from Finland, France, Japan, Canada, currently in South America, that's Graeme Stanley, a few Canadians here actually. Okay, and they're going to be talking about different aspects of learning. We've got Dr. Dale Eber Eberwine, who's going to be talking about FTP which is really interesting. Uh, lots of, there's a Moodle guy who's going to be talking about math equations, different topics, different ideas. And I think it's going to be really, really special. All right. Uh, we've got Mark talking about blended learning and Moodle and WizIQ. And we've got this couple here. She's a writer, Mei Mei Fox for Huffington. He's a producer and artist, and they're married. They're going to talk about, they're going to interview one another and talk about uh, relationships and how to stay in a good relationship and how to manage with relationships, not only between couples, but between people in general. So various topics from every walk of life. Okay, so that's the Moodle MOOC. Plus, of course, there's the Moodle aspect. In addition, there's a weekend from the 7th to the 9th of February, which is full of uh, presentations, 33. And we've got Stephen Downs. Have you heard of Stephen Downs? Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of Stephen Downs. Thumbs down if you haven't. That would be very surprising. Okay, Stephen Downs is is actually the uh, one of the leading people in um, the MOOCs. He's all about MOOCs. And then there's Kurt Curtis Bunk. He wrote about blended learning. He's at Indiana University and he presents around the globe. Right now he's on sabbatical. He's written some books. He's going to be discussing not only his latest book, but other things, how you can publish books. He's going to be talking about how you can publish books for free. Okay, so that's Kurt Bunk, Dr. Bunk. And we've got other presenters here that you may know from previous uh, Connecting Online. Connecting Online, CO14 as it's called, started in 2009. So this is the fifth annual Connecting Online conference. We also uh, write books. The presenters who want to can continue and write books. Um, some of these presenters, like Remish, have been presenting for the past five years. <laughs> or um, where is she here? Ah, uh, there she is. Crystal Brody and Ludmilla Smirnova and uh, Professor, I'm sure you know this one, Dio Talevi. And uh, Dio Talevi has been presenting also since the beginning. And uh, he presents on copyrights. He's the copyright police. Okay, so he's going to be talking about that. So it's exciting. 
and two Ludmilla's what do you mean oh yeah two Ludmilla's because she's going to be presenting twice once by herself and once with me uh, also Jason's going to be presenting twice so yeah they're on twice so it should be really exciting and I'm looking forward to seeing you there so uh, just Google it C O O nine to uh, C O one four. Okay, let me get the uh, the second link for you before we get timed out, which is probably going to happen in a second. Okay, so there's the link. Unless somebody uh, gets it for me faster than I can. Okay, so there's. Oops, I don't think that's it. Here's the link. To um, here we go. I hope I can get it. Yeah, it's going to be a really busy month. I'm going to be presenting about, I counted, I'm going to have 72 live classes in February. So wish me luck. <laughs> and of course, facilitating uh, Moodle. If you've done the Moodle for uh, Teachers Evo for 2014, uh, the Moodle MOOC, MOOC, Moodle is going to be a bit different. So join. It's never the same. Nothing with me is ever the same. I don't give the same course the same way twice. So uh, if you've done Moodle MOOCs or Moodles with me, uh, this one's going to be quite different. Yes, 72 live classes. I hope also, but I've got a lot of people to help me out, so it should be fun. And there's also Robin, of course, she's doing a mate. And uh, Mubarak. Uh, is going, I think he's from Morocco. He's going to be talking about web quests. So we've got web quests as well. And we've got uh, math also. So every subject under the sun. Oh, I'll be sleeping. Don't worry, I sleep. <laughs> All right. So uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining today's uh, session on web quests, the first. We're going to have four more in the month of February. So uh, don't forget to uh, join those. And if you're in Moodle, Moot, Moodle for Teachers Evo 14, you're doing a wonderful job. It's an amazing course. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how you go on to the next one. Oh, I see Ajara is here. Good to see you. And as Jason says, relax. So tomorrow is the opening ceremony. Join us. Jason and I are going to sing a duet. No, I'm just kidding. Jason's going to sing his song. Okay, he um, wrote a song for the MOOC. So it should be exciting. So tomorrow, join us for the opening ceremony. Thank you so much. And... Bye for now. See you tomorrow.